Hello. Today we're going to play Ghostbusters, the board game. So I have everything all set up <clears throat> to get going. Uh, but before I get going, I'm going to uh, show you a couple things. First one being the fact that I'm going to play Campaign 2, The Adulness Incursion. And this is uh, Scenario 1. So it's going to tell us uh, that we have special gates, which are called flank gates in this scenario, that uh, we'll have success if we can close each open gate, and we'll fail if a ghost is supposed to uh, come out of the spirit world and isn't able to. It also tells us what happens when we roll open gates and closed gates. And then as you can see, we have closed gates over here and open gates on the other side of the board. So there's only three gates that we're supposed to close. Now for this scenario, um, I'm using some of the impossible mode. So I'm using uh, the impossible mode for the galloping ghoul, plus uh, impossible mode for the gruesome twosome. And for the first time, I'm using uh, two of the class three spectral ghostbusters. And then you can see over there all the ghosts that remain in the spirit world. So like I said, if ghosts are supposed to be coming out of the spirit world and they're not able to, then I lose the game. Um, I'm also using uh, some of the taxi drivers, some of the base ones. So this is just kind of some of the cards for the different ghosts. So that's the class one um, taxi driver, the fearsome flush, which is in the spirit world right now. There's the impossible mode galloping ghoul. Class, uh, the regular Galloping Ghoul. Now, one of the things about the gall Galloping Ghouls is you can see that if two of them land on the same space, they'll become a gruesome twosome. And for these ones, if two of them land on the same space, then they become um, one of the Boogaloo man manifestations. You can see the normal ones do that as well. And this is the bigger uh, Boogaloo Manifestation, what it does, and then, of course, the Spectral Ghostbusters. So those are the cards um, for the different ghosts that I'll be using. All the, at the start, all the Ghostbusters are in the um, Ecto-1. This is the PKE meter, which its job is I will roll and then... Um, from the ghost or the gate, this will show like what direction everything's moving from. And then we'll have our proton dice, is what they call it. And in the when you're playing with more players, everybody will of course will have their own die that they roll. This die right here is for the gate, so it's got all the gate gate symbols. Um, it's also got what's called a, a chaos symbol. So when that's rolled. Um, any ghosts that are within line of sight, which is three spaces from a Ghostbuster, will act as if they were missed and are going to move all over the place. I'm going to be going a little bit different with uh, the characters. I'm not actually going to be using the standard characters. I'm going to be using um, Milnitz. The Rookie. Griffin. And Ortiz. So that'll be my four, my team of four Ghostbusters. Um, I'm also going to be using um, one of the other Ecto ones that I ended up buying. So this is the Ecto one that I'm going to be using. And later on uh, in video two, I'll actually show the package. I forgot to bring it out, but. I'm going to show you kind of the difference between this Ecto-1 and the game. So this is the game's Ecto-1, the one that comes with it. So you can see that the other one is quite larger by a space or so. Um, so far, I haven't really been able to see like too much of a difference um, with it being a bigger space. But, I mean, come on, it's much cooler to use the other one. So for my scenario, 
it shows us where all of the gates are placed and uh, where all of the different ghosts are placed and you can see that the Ecto-1 starts over here in the corner so that's where I will set it up so for a turn every uh, Ghostbuster has uh, a base of two actions that they can take and they can use that action to move uh, one or two spaces in any direction um, including diagonally and I could move like one space diagonally, one space up, all diagonally um, so you can do a lot of different movement with um, when you're out on foot um, you can drive the Ecto-1 and the Ecto-1 can drive for up to six spaces but it cannot go diagonally you can uh, if you have line of sight to the Ecto-1 then you can uh, deposit any trapped um, ghosts that you have into the Ecto-1 and then they go back to the spirit world spirit world. Uh, you can remove uh, slime off an adjacent Ghostbuster um, which is good to do because the fact that when you do that is for somebody else you could only use like one action compared to if uh, a Ghostbuster has to remove slime from themselves um, which it's not considered to be an action and there's another thing that we're gonna that's called a maneuver so when you remove a uh, slime for yourself it's not considered to be any of those but it takes all of your actions basically to, to remove one slime so it's uh, more economical if somebody can help you out and then with the um, the main Ghostbusters actually one of the Ghostbusters actually gets experience points for uh, removing slime off other Ghostbusters so it's actually helpful now um, you can also combat if you're within line of sight of a ghost then you can uh, do combat against a ghost or um, against a gate and then something that's not considered to be an action um, that you can do uh, either before your actions, in the middle of your actions, after your actions is called a maneuver. So when you do a maneuver, you can either you can take ghosts from, I should say, trap ghosts from another Ghostbuster that's either outside um, or inside the Ecto One. They just have to be within line of sight. Uh, so you can take the ghosts from them, or you can get into the Ecto One using that maneuver. So line of sight um, basically you do not have line of sight through the dashed red through the normal um, the normal red like the gates and stuff um, or through the yellow lines you don't have line of sight. So for movement you can't move through the dashed red lines, the sawed red lines, and you can't move through the orange lines either. Uh, ghosts, of course, do not have any restrictions on their movement. They can move anywhere, but they do have line of sight restrictions. So um, if they are beyond uh, like the red over here, like these guys do not have a line of sight to anything over here since they're on the other side, other side of that fence. Now, as we start, uh, the zombie taxi drivers actually like the Ecto-1, they're taxi drivers, so their whole purpose is to try to get inside of the Ecto-1. Um, so as we start, that might be what we want to do is to try to trap these guys before they're able to get to the Ecto-1 as we start moving towards the gates, plus they'll start giving us um, some more ghosts in the spirit world. So I'm going to have the rookie go first, and so I'm going to use my maneuver to get out of the Ecto-1. And so I do not have line of sight on him, it's one, two, three, which he's a little bit further anyway, but there's also some red there. Uh, one, two, three, up. there's some yellow there, so I don't have, well, actually I do, one, two, three, because it's only a corner that I'm crossing even though that yellow's there. So he actually does seem to have a line of sight over there. But I'm going to make it... I think I might want to move closer. So when I, if I try to shoot him shoot at him and miss then um, if he's on the if he's on the ecto one 
Then he and the Ecto-1 are going to move together three spaces in a random direction twice. But that's only if he's on the Ecto-1. So it's not going to be too bad if I end up missing. So I'm going to go ahead and move here. So I'm going to go one, two. So that was a movement action that I just performed. So now I'm going to perform a, a combat action. And so to bring this back up, so it's uh, going to take three or higher to hit, and to trap him only takes one stream. And whenever you tra trap a, a ghost, you get XP for it. So a three or higher, and I got a two, which is a miss, but like I said, he's not on the Ecto-1, so that doesn't matter. But that was his uh, two actions. He moved and he tried to combat. So now it will be uh, Griffin's turn. So she's gonna she's gonna help him out. So she'll get out as well. There. She's gonna be the one, two. And she gets a five, so that would be a trap. So this one is trapped, it goes on her card. Like so. And then for trapping a ghost, she's gonna get one XP. So we'll go up one. And now, um, so if she was to roll a 6, she would have gained 1 XP. So you see all the different levels that you can move up as you gain different XP. So to start out, she always has this one. She becomes a level 2. She'd have her level 2 ability plus her level 1 ability. Alright, so now it's going to be Ortiz. I think Ortiz is going to take a... Hmm. Let's think about taking a drive action. So for me to get into this area right here, the fence is blocking it there, the fence is blocking it down there, and the fence is blocking there. So the only way to get into this area is through that space right there. There's a ghost blocking it. I can't move through the ghost. So I might have to just get out, and go over there and try to clear some of those ghosts out. So I think we'll do that. Manu use my maneuver to get out. And we'll go move twice. And then I'm too far away to be able to hit that one, so I think I'll use my second combat action to go after the Galloping Ghoul. And for the Galloping Ghoul, he is a three or higher to a hit, but he also only takes one stream. But uh, when missed, he's going to move two spaces in a random direction. When he's trapped, he's going to slime everybody that's around him. So I don't want to get too close to that one. So three or higher to trap him. And I got a three, so. Her XP is gonna move up one. And unfortunately he was at two, not three. Had he been at three. Actually, you know what, that would have been better, so. We'll do that. Say that I move there instead of moving in. I didn't read what her uh, ability was. So she would gain an extra XP for having trapped him at his maximum uh, line of sight distance. And let's see here. And when the Ecto-1 moves, um, it's there isn't really a facing per se. Like I could start from the back and move like six down here. I could start from the front. So the front and the back don't really doesn't really matter. Two, three, four, five, six. And 
but the only problem is that is there, so it's going to be hard to get out. One, two, three, four, five. But I can move up to six spaces. So one, two, three, four, five. I think we'll do that. It's going to be kind of dangerous. Park there. So that was my one action. Now I'll use my maneuver to get out. I can get out there. Which is going to put me right next to the gruesome twosome. And then when missed, every gruesome twosome is going to move one space towards that ghost bus with one space in a random direction. Which there's only one more on the board, except for the fact that we're going to end up getting slimed if I miss. It's going to take two streams, but even if I hit it, it's going to move one space towards, towards me. So... I think I'm going to move. Move, go here. So that's it. That's all the uh, Ghostbusters movements and actions. So now we'll see if there's any end of round events. I don't see any. Checking my ghosts real quick just to make sure there weren't any end of round events. Oh yeah, there is actually. Um, so the zombie, zombie taxi, taxi driver is going to move one space towards the Ecto-1. Actually, Ecto-1's over there, so it'll go there. Uh, closed gates do not block line of sight or movement. I believe that's it. I don't believe anybody else has any. Check the spectrals. Nope. So the spectrals do. And hold on. Spectrals are actually going to have a different uh, setup location. My bad. Whoops, wrong, wrong guy. So they're going to set up there and there. But they are going to move towards the closest Ghostbuster, which would be there. There. All right, so that's the end of round. So I have to roll the event die. So it is the star. So the star is up here. It's a closed gate. So according to the scenario, um, we're going to have a ghost merge from the spirit world from each ghost or with within line of sight of one or more closed gates. So anybody within line of sight? So that'll be one, two, three. Technically they would be within line of sight too for the one, two. So that's two. They're within line of sight of a closed gate. Okay, and that's a six. So we'll bring out the fearsome flushes that'll go there and go there since the six is down from where the Ghostbusters are. So these guys need to get out, get away from that gate.
So now it's back to their turn again. And the rookie. So one, two, three. He's going to back up. So I'm going to move for my first action. It's one. And then I will shoot at that one. So a three or higher to trap. So I trapped him. So I get one XP for trapping that one. And normally for go for ghosts that have like uh, take more than one stream, you'll use these little tokens and you'll place them on the ghost until they have enough streams to take down. But these are level one ghosts, so it's just one hit and then that's basically it. All right, and so I'm going to use uh, the rookie's maneuver to transfer this ghost to Ortiz. So she's got two ghosts. And so he moved and he attacked, so now it's Griffin's turn. She's going to move back as well. One, two, three, so I'm going to move back. Two. And I will attack that one. So the fearsome flush is also a three or higher. And I only got a one, so I missed. So when missed, moves in a random direction until an obstacle or map, map edge stops movement. So a two, so it's going to go straight up. There really isn't any obstacles for them. So I'll go over here. Because he moved through, Griffin is going to slime her. So now because she was slimed, she's only got one action. So luckily she performed both of her actions before she got slimed. So now Ortiz, I'm within line of sight of the Ecto-1. So because of the fact that I'm within line of sight of the Ecto-1, I have to have adjacency too though. So I'm going to move. So I'll move for one. I'm going to transfer those back into the spirit world. And that's my two actions, moving and depositing. So now Janine is going to attack the uh, gruesome twosome, the impossible mode one. So it's going to be four or more. It's going to be a little bit harder to attack, to get. So she missed. So now when missed, every gruesome twosome was one space towards that Ghostbuster, then one space in a random direction. So one space towards, one space towards. So because of that, it's going to go through her. It's going to go through this one. It's going to end up over there, so it's going to slime her. So she also gets the minus one slime token. Now it's going to move one space in a random direction, which is going to be here. And then this one's going to pass through that one and go over here. Now, like I said, had that one been another gruesome twosome, they would have combined and became uh, another ghost. But since uh, they were different, that was all that happened. So. Since she was slimed, she lost her other action, so that's basically 
it for her. And so I'm at uh, 25 minutes about, so we'll go ahead and stop the first video.